Oh. Nope, I'm it's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. Okay, and then uh uh git commits am clippy is happy. <sighs> Yeah, so, um, we can't do a 32K in a U16 because we don't get all U16. We get 2 to the 15, and that's 32K, right? If we were to change this to minus 1, this now works. Perf's really bad because it's not a power of 2. Um, yeah, but we can only use, um... We only have 15 bits because the top bit is used. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And it's good that it caught that because it's right. It's fucking right. Uh, subtracting one is fine. So, yeah, we lose one byte because we don't. We, we expect that you can add the size to an index without overflowing an index. And that makes you lose one byte because I have to be able to index beyond the last byte. Fuck yeah, dude. That works. Nice. 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 Let's try like uh, 16 or something. Let's see what happens. I guess this is going to be... Oh, okay. This just got deleted. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that just gets completely optimized out. That makes sense. This one... This doesn't get optimized out, and it looks really bad, but I think this is just because it's not a big enough bulk operation that we really unroll that. So I don't think this is particularly bad code gen. I think the compiler just really doesn't want to unroll. Yeah, it's not unrolling in this case because it just... I mean, it's still doing uh, 8 bytes at a time, but it's not like unrolling at a shit ton here. And that makes sense. That's reasonable. Um, it's just like a reasonable unroll threshold there. Um, 1024. Oh. oh, it's so hot. Uh, 40 times 1024, we'll switch back up to U32s. Uh, 1024. Oh, 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 it's so good. It's so fucking good. What was it uh, for Bumpalo again? Bumpalo. So we're getting uh, we're getting a hundred and let's pick the big one here. One hundred one hundred seventy two point three billion. So we're getting this many, and Bumpalo gets us. Uh, same thing. Test average, test size, reset each time. Five U eight allocation. All right. Let's see how we let's see how we compare to Bumpalo. For Bumpalo, did we have to decrease the test size? I can't remember if we did. Or the averaging. Don't forget free. I don't need to free. It's a bump allocator. Um, Uh, I think we're a little faster than Bumpalo. <laughs> I mean, it's not fair. Mine's just, mine's just so fucking good. Yep, and this is even with that null, with the type database. So when Desu is complaining about the type database stuff, we can give it a null type database, and all of that code gets removed. Such that we don't have to, like, have that be a tunable thing where we have a different implementation that doesn't have the type database. Yeah, once again... Desu backseating. Okay, I think we're faster than Bumpalo. Is the audio out of sync? It probably is, because OBS does that. It probably is fucking out of memory or something. 
<sighs> Let this sit for a second, drop the stream, then we'll resync it. Here we go. Now it's back in sync. Wow, crazy how that works. Fucking dumb shit. Restart cam, yep. I don't even restart the cam. What I do when I do that is I go into here, I go to properties, I switch to a different capture device, I wait a couple seconds, and then I switch back to this capture device. So I don't know if it's a driver thing or what. <laughs> Oh, there we go! We'll let this run one more time, because the first iteration might be slower. Um, <clears throat> you can make a cron job, yeah. Rewrite OBS and Rust. Soul burn, soul, soul X burn. <laughs> Very anime 2000s name. Fuck yeah. Thanks for the raid. How are you doing today? What are you up to? I think it's more of a driver issue than OBS in this case. That could be. Oh. Oh, we'll take the faster one. Hey, we're 500 times faster than Bumpalo. Woo! <laughs> All right. We don't need to do any more Bumpalo tests. It doesn't matter. We know we're, we know we're significantly faster than every other allocator in the world. Uh, that's just, just, just a fucking given, okay? Like, our code's literally just better than everyone else's code. Um, all right. <laughs> oh! 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 Eighty one allocations per cycle. Oh! It's pretty good, okay? I don't want to toot my own horn. It's pretty fucking good. Okay, let's implement, uh, what else are we gonna do? I had, like, uh, plans? Was it plans? Let me make sure there's plans. Plans. Okay, uh, add support for non i size references. Done. Add minimum alignment. Didn't do that. Add mutable support. Didn't do that. Add database traits so we can disable type databasing at compile time. We did that. Thread safe type database. We didn't do that yet. Where is it losing 460x perf? Uh, probably by having a function call per allocation. <laughs> it's just, you're just not going to beat this. You, can, you cannot have an allocator that returns references or pointers and beat my performance. It is literally impossible. There is no way you can do it. Unless it's faster. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe they put a sleep in there. <laughs> no, Bumpalo's totally fine. Like, Bumpalo's really, really good, really fast. Uh, mine's just better. You know? <laughs> Are you going to put it on GitHub? Maybe when it's done. Okay, let's see if we can get... Um, let's see if we can get... Uh, um... 
I'm still learning Rust, but I've uh, been building a little tool for tagging git commits uh, based on conventional commits, mostly for learning. That sounds like an awesome project. Super sweet. Another EU-friendly stream. Yeah, I really need to stop streaming at these shit hours because it's, it's not... This is not a good time for me to be streaming. Um, okay, so now what we need to do is we... <laughs> shit. I would really like to do all of these things today. <laughs> you started streaming at it? No, I started streaming at a terrible time. We've gone over this, okay? We've gone over this. This, this is what you need to do, okay? If you're not streaming during these hours, you're fucking yourself. And when did I start streaming today? I started streaming 10 hours ago. Uh, which would have been like 4 p.m. Which is like 1600. So I started streaming like here. I started streaming at like the start of the loss. And I'm gonna stop streaming probably about fucking here. Okay? <laughs> this is... I'm streaming at worst hours. I'm literally streaming at the worst possible hours. <laughs> if you integrated the hours I streamed today, it is the worst hours to be streaming. <laughs> we are grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think ideal stream would be like, Probably like 8 a.m. to like 5 p.m. Which is basically the work day. Like this, right here. Just stream for another 15 hours. <laughs> you hear 10 hours ago is midnight? Yeah. This is census data. This, this isn't like... This isn't a guess. This is actually census data. Graph is for science and technology. Well, uh, programming didn't exist uh, back when I did this data. It's the same fucking graph. Humans haven't changed since last year, okay? <laughs> this is just measuring what percentage of the English-speaking world is awake. This, that's literally all this is. This is like EU is waking up. East Coast US is waking up. Everyone is awake. EU starts going to sleep. It's literally just that. It's just, it, it's a graph of English speaking people. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know how hard it would be for me to grab this data. Stat, let's make sure there's no like token in here. Uh, yeah, there's, okay, I'm doing, a, I'm doing illegal stuff in there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Definitely not scraping HTML with a cookie and a fake user agent. Um, remember programming category? Pepperidge Farm remembers, yeah. <sighs> Looks like everyone uses it to procrastinate working. That's exactly what people use it for. Friday Yellow Spike, I don't know. That must be like a popular streamer that was streaming at that hour, like had a schedule. Uh, dude, you remind me of Weave so much. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> um, uh, that's the only way to do it. Yeah, yeah, it is. I know, I know. Uh, hi, Gamosa. Thanks for all the streams. I was wondering if you're going to upload the past stream, the Freedom Phone one. No, I'm not. Uh, that got a little too real. I don't want to I don't want to upload that one. Sorry. I don't even have it, actually. <laughs> I think I cleaned out all my streams. Um, but yeah, that one was a little spicy. <sighs> I mean, it was fine, but like, I could see people getting pretty mad about that. So we're just going to pretend it didn't happen. Uh, I'd like to do more Freedom Phone stuff, but I was expecting it to be like some hacked up OS, but since it's just a MediaTek Android phone, there's really not much on there that we could really claim is not real Surface. So, 
Okay. Uh, imp add minimum alignment of objects. Um, how do we want to do that? We have to apply the shift where? We have to update the align mask to set a minimum alignment. Um... I think it's pretty easy, actually. Alignment only comes into play here and never again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a target that affects more than just people who bought that single type of phone. Yeah, exactly. You could probably find bugs, but it would be actual wild out date. Yeah, and it would probably affect real devices like that MediaTek chipset or MediaTek chipsets that are close enough to it sim such that they use the same driver code, pretty fucking likely. So, yeah. No freedom of hacking freedom. Now, we could maybe do some other shit. We could write, like, backdoors. We could write firmware things. We could do things that aren't bugs, but are more just, like, abusing the fact that we can flash every byte, like bootloader hacks. That would be kind of fun to do. But, yeah, is that Rust layout or your own is Rust's? Okay, so what we're going to do is um, compute the minimum alignments. Let's align is equal to um, layout.align dot min, the smaller, of, uh, the larger of the two, uh, one shift by shift. Mm hmm. Uh, if align dot count ones is not equal to one, or the alignment exceeds the maximum align. Okay. Layout. Then this is align. And that's layout size. Okay. I think that works. I think that will now set a minimum alignment. Um, then we have to do the same thing for a local pool. And I think we can just take the same code because I think it's actually identical for this, this part of the code. Compute the minimum alignment, layout align, the larger of the two, uh, one with the shift. Write a program to overwrite the MBR. Uh, one shift shift. I think that will overflow at compile time. So I don't think we have to check for that, do we? Like, if we set a shift of, like, a 100, I think this will overflow at compile time. Um, and I think we don't actually have to check that. Nope, this is just gonna build. Shit. Um... Hmm. Okay. What do I want to do here, chat? Uh, shift. I don't have a great way of con constraining that, do I? Did development stream from 2 to 4 a.m. last night. Didn't get to sleep till 4.45. I got a phone call waking me up on P1 issue at 720. Oof! Uh, how do I want to check this? Here, we'll put in an assertion. Layout align is going to be a use size. Uh, checked shift left. Uh, shift is some uh a shift uh is too large uh 
Oh, okay. I want shift to be a uh, U32, I guess. All right. Assert that that is some. Shift is too large. Even though this looks like a runtime assertion, I don't know. Can you do compiler certs? I don't think you can. No, there's no compile asserts. So we'll just do this in assert. It'll get compiled out because it's const prop anyways. Like, this will literally never exist in code. Um, so now if I run this, this should yell at me. Yep, shift is too large. Um, boom. And then if we do a large shift, then all the allocations will fail because they'll exceed max align. So, uh, yeah, I I'm okay with this. So check shift left um, of a U size by shift. Make sure that it's some shift is too large if it overflows. Perfect. Const asserts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? 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 Why is this not a thing in the language then? Oh. So you can just do this. And I can put it... Where can I put it then? I guess just here's fine. Make sure uh, shift is sane. Monkeys. Monkeys. You lied to me. You got, I got scammed. I got absolutely scammed. All of that code refactoring and I got scammed. Um, why Rust? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So let's see how we do on size here. So then if I add a print down here, um, print ln elk base, this is gonna print out the, uh, the base of the allocations we do and they should be jumping by four at a time. Oh, we can't do that. Uh, we'll just do it here then, I guess. Uh, elk uh, print line. Elk. Ooh, and I can do elk. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, X. And these should all be four bytes apart. Yep, they are. And if we set this back to zero, they should be one byte apart because they're U8s. Yep. Okay, so that now allows the user to control that, but it doesn't do anything yet. 
Um, so what we need to do now, compute the end of the allocation. Um, make sure the index of the next byte How do we handle this? Um, <laughs> a band tilted tree. Yeah. What an asshole. Um, compute the end of the allocation. We have to align that up then. This is a little tough for slices. Hello from Spain! Barcelona, brother! What's up, brav? <laughs> Como estas? I think when I mate, <laughs> EU is waking up. Yup, E is waking up. Why does Twitch keep resetting to 480p? I don't know. Is that happening to anyone else? Itu muy bien. Spanish people. <laughs> Your Spanish is good as bump Alec perf. Yup. Yeah. Yikes. 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 Uh, how do I do this? I think I need to make... I think... Um... Morning, uh, free lip vibrations and broken Spanish. Y'all are living a good life. Um, ba 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 ba. Uh, <sighs> good food in Spain. You know what the best food in Spain is? No cap. Spanish fucking rice, dude. Oh. 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 Dude. Spanish rice. So good. Paella! Woo! Yeah. Yeah, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. I love seafood paella. Yeah. Bro, I don't like paella. <laughs> You're just wrong, dude. You're just objectively wrong. And you should feel bad. You know? Because you're wrong. <laughs> How do I want to do this? The only thing I enjoy eating from the ocean is fish. fish. What do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. I don't know why. I don't know why that's a joke. <laughs> and seaweed, I suppose. How do you like eating seaweed? Seaweed's fucking gross. Okay. So I think if I want to make this work, then what all? Chat. 
Chat, I think we're getting our bite back. I think we're getting our bite back, chat. Uh, get status. I get diff. What? Have, what? What have I even done? Uh, get commit. Am starting shift stuff. Okay, so Alec Raw is actually gonna return a U size. So we allocate things, they have to have this minimum alignment. We do this, we allocate the base. Alec base. Then we make sure that the base of an allocation has to be a valid index. Overgrown carrot! Hell yeah, thank you so much for the raid. How's your stream? Now we're gonna check the alloc base. Um, this actually will allow us to actually go out of bounds. So now what matters is that we can index the first byte of our allocation. Does that make sense? So we're gonna make sure that our we can index the first byte of the allocation rather than we can index the end of it. And then we're gonna shift from using index when we're accessing fields and stuff um, yeah. We did Inferno and try hack me and it was a pain. Oh shit. It's too hot for a hood. We are, we are super high. Okay. Make sure the allocation base, the base, the The allocation base fits uh, when shifted by shift. Uh, when shifted to the uh, base. <laughs> wubula, wubula, contor, wub, wublicator, wub, wublicator. Nice beatbox. Yeah, I like that. You just knock down the houses of people who own a subwoofer. You like a goddamn big bad wolf. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's. Uh, Jesus. Um. Returning an index to the allocated memory. That returns the allocation base. So we make sure that elk base fits when shifted. We know that elk base will be aligned because the alignment is defined by the shift. We shift it over. That gets us an index for the base. The base. When can I order the Gamoza woofer? Yeah, I come, I come over to your house and I just go. Okay, initialize the T at offset index. Um, that's in the pool. So now we don't convert the index. Uh, then we literally slice it by that index plus the T. Two thirty one elk base. Uh, this is going to be index from uh, U size. Elk base shift by shift. You know what? Um, this will take a U size. 
This will yield an index. Index uh, from u size elk base shift shift. Okay, so we make sure we fit. Here we actually do it. That now returns an index. That's okay. So basically, the first byte of every allocation has to fit in an index, and it has to be aligned. But this allows slices of U8s to not be aligned on each of the elements. Does that make sense? Um, it doesn't make sense to me yet. Uh, we're figuring it out. Init unchecked. So now this has to be uh, as U size shift by uh, shift. We know that won't overflow, so we just we do that. Uh, so basically, the only thing we've changed is that init unchecked now takes the index. Um, oh, and that's wrong. It needs to take a, uh, a clear local. Since it's a local allocation, so we have to clear... We have to clear the local bit. So we're past the local allocation. We have to clear the local bit. Um, we convert it to a U size and then we shift it and that's the actual index. Uh, oh, we're not in local. We're not in local, okay. Initialize the data. Uh, get the index as a U size and shift it to the left by the shift amount. And that will get the index to initialize that data at. And we just write in the val there. Next, uh, 326. This, elk base. Same thing. Uh, we allocate raw. That gives us that as U size, shift by shift. Right? Um, does that make sense? Yep. That writes in to that index, to that byte index, it writes in elements. 372. Now, we convert it to a U size, and then we shift it here. Really, anywhere that we do as U size, we want to be shifting it. So here, as U size, we shift it. Here, as U size, we shift it. We missed that. That would have been a bug. Uh, we get the index, we shift it. Um, index, as U size, shift it. Index, as U size, shift it. Uh, index, as U size, shift it. Once again, we're, we're converting it to the byte uh, address. 372, this is now failing. Uh, 372, this is what we want to fail. This is a byte index because we have the base. We add the array offsets. Uh, we add the index times that. Now, this no longer is a from U size. Dude, Rick Ross is so good. <laughs> all his music is the same, but it's all very good. <laughs> okay. So, we shift. In alloc, we make sure that the alignment is at least one shift by shift. That's important. Then, here, we make sure that the alloc base fits when shifted over as an index. We then return the index, which is shifted. Then, anywhere that we're dealing with an index, uh, so this index is literally just the raw U size. This has an index. Uh, that Alex raw, that gets an uh, index. That's good. This takes an index. Get unchecked. Um. Ooh, 
I don't know if this works. Get unchecked. This expects an index. No, this is okay. Get gets unchecked at that index. I don't actually listen to Rick Ross, but the song sounds good. Yeah. Rick Ross slaps, dude. Get unchecked. That takes the index. That goes into this. It converts it by shifting it. Down here, we do the same thing. We convert the index by shifting. That's okay. Then down here, we're manually handling the indices, and we do a knit unchecked, and a knit unchecked takes our raw U size and the temp. Then we return val index. Uh, this, get unchecked. Same thing. That's with an index. Then we shift it. Get unchecked. Index array off. I think we're good. I think we did that. So this will work because uh, we're not actually using the NUMA pool. Now we got to do the same thing for the local pool. Shift. The alignment must be at least one shift shift. Then down here, end. Make sure uh, the index, um, make sure the allocation index fits in an index. F try from U size, and we'll do elk base shift by shift. Okay. Okay. Or. From U size, ALK base, shift. That is then set local. So this will now probably crash. Eh, maybe not crash because we over allocate. Uh, cargo Miri run. Oh, yeah, we don't have Miri. Um, okay, we'll just have to do it right then. If end is less than a local size, less than or equal to, then it's good. Set the end. Uh, Index from U size shifted over. Okay, now anywhere that we do as U size now, so init unchecked. Um, that takes a U size. Um, the uh, U size index must already be uh, D um, uh, clear local D. Right, so that's just a raw index. Then we have this. Uh, that's fine. Um, so it was the same as U size. So anywhere that we do this, we now have to shift it. Clear it. Convert it to a U size. Then shift it by shift. This. Shift by shift. This. Shift by shift. This. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, there's just three of them. 243, and it unchecked. This is now um, clear local as you size, shift by shift. Clear the local bit, convert it to a U size, then shift it. Uh, one second. Someone needs a bug fix. Uh, 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 cargo build. Uh, scope threads, that's stable now. And then cannoli internals. Uh, what is sync once cell now? It's, uh, renamed to, it's in sync. 
Uh, once lock or lazy lock? Uh, once lock. Uh, sync once sell. Uh, once lock. G. How do you do all targets? Is it literally called all targets? Is that everything in the workspace? I don't know if it is. Uh, I want... Build all packages in the workspace? I think this is now building everything. Yeah, it's building the benchmarks, building the server. Okay. Building snuffles. The visualization. Benchmark symbolizer, that. Okay, this is built everything now. Uh, get commits am updated for currents uh, nightly. Get push. Uh, ooh. Uh, get remote origin remove. Get remote remove origin. Get remote add origin uh, cannoli. Uh, GitHub. Baby. Am I Pull it down. Okay. Um. Okay. As you size. Uh, as you size. Shift, shift. So all of these should be clearing. Clear, clear, clear. 337 and it unchecked elk base uh clear local as you size shift by shift uh 3d4 and it unchecked yep this is now we don't have to reset that local here Perfect. And let's do a quick check here. For everything that uses shift, we sh they should be identical on both. Check shift left, shift too large, a layout align max, shift, bam, shift. Uh, try from U size elk base, shift. Uh, from U size elk base, shift. That one gets converted to local. This one, clear local as you size, shift in a knit. Then we have get unchecked, clear local as you size, shift. Then we have initialize thing as slice, clear local as you size, shift. Uh, as you size, shift, uh, clear local on this one. This is in and it slice. Then we have get on check slice. We get it, we clear it, as you size, shift. Done, that's everything. Uh, get status. So now I think all this stuff should be in where now the shifting stuff is supported. So let's check this out. So now these have, uh, these have a two bit shift, meaning that these are byte allocations and they're one byte away, but they're actually not one byte away. They're actually four bytes separated in memory.
Um, yeah, I think this makes sense now. So now this should be half the speed, right? This should be half the speed of what it was before. Um, or no, this should be a quarter of the speed because now we're uh, initializing way more sparse memory. So instead of 82 uh, bytes per cycle, we should be getting 82 divided by four or we completely ruin performance. Looks like we completely ruined performance. Interesting. Let's make sure if we do zero, is this okay? Yep, so that's still fine. And then if we do a one bit shift, Oh, this will be way slower because we're going out of bounds of L1. So now we go to 20 kilobytes. Wow. Okay, this just ruins perf. Okay. Yeah, it can't optimize this. Shame. Unwrap failed? On what? Oh, that's on the allocation failure itself, I think. But if we do zero zero, we still get our perf, which is good. This still gets op this has to be optimized down to that uh to those just mem memory operations. Yep. Uh let's double check. I think this feature is still good. Yep. So that still optimizes. And then what we should be able to do is now, if we do a 32K and a U16, this should now work. Whereas before this wouldn't work. But now we no longer care about the index. Yeah, we no longer care about the index being able to be set. Um, but 32K plus one, this should fail. Correct. Um, and then if we change it to a one, let's set this to 32K. This should fail because now I need a 64 byte backing because these are now two byte allocations with that alignment. So this now, if I go to 64K, this will now work. It's a lot slower, but that's okay. That would have failed by now. Uh, and then if we do plus one, this should now fail. Yep. Okay, so yeah, unfortunately the shift stuff seems to really hurt optimizations, um, but that's okay because keep in mind this like everything getting inlined where it just is a mem set, it's not realistic, right? Like most code won't have that shape. Um, but this allows you to uh this allows you to get more indices out of this U16. It allows you to have a denser database that fits in a smaller region. Um so for example, uh we can go the other way, we can say 5U32, right? And now we're doing uh uh, 32 bit allocations. We're going to set this to four, which is uh, to two, which is a, a shift of four. And previously, um, this would have failed. Right? So this should succeed. Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, because we're doing 32K times four.
Yeah. Um, so even though this is slow, we can set the test average down to 16 just so it goes faster. Um, so this works. Whereas this wouldn't have worked before because we are indexing, um, we are indexing, uh, we're indexing, uh, 128 kilobytes of memory with a U16, right? So if we were to change this to a one, this would now fail because we're, we're out of indices because the index has to index the, the word or the U16, or in this case, it has to index the bytes of the allocation. Um, so yeah, and we're, we're still getting uh, uh, with this, the bytes per cycle isn't accurate anymore, but with this, we're still getting, we're still getting a billion allocations per second. So we're getting four gigabytes a second of throughput. <laughs> like this is totally fine, right? Um, but now it means basically if you know that almost every object you're going to allocate is four bytes aligned or it's a U32 or it's maybe even larger, maybe it's an eight byte aligned thing, then you can use this to decrease the amount of the index space that you use that you consume, um, which allows you to use a smaller index. So in this case, uh, like what would be a good example? Yeah. With a U32. If we made this a U32, we could then have a 16 gigabyte pool. Whereas without this feature, we could only have a four gigabyte pool. And a 16 gigabyte versus a four gigabyte pool might be the difference of like whether or not you need to use a U size or a U64. Um, so I actually really like this feature. Even though it does have a cost, it does seem like it hurts the uh, optimizer and reasoning. We're still getting a billion a second and any real code that's like actually deserializing objects, it's not going to optimize out into that fucking vector rights anyways, right? Um, so the fastest mode is zero. The fastest mode is U size and zero because the compiler doesn't do any casts, any like crazy, you know, sign extension, zero extension, truncation. Um, but this allows you to have denser configurations of the same engine, if that makes sense. Uh, which to me is very valuable because my local pool, I could see myself using a U16 for my local pool and a U32 for my NUMA pool. Well, I can't do that because they have to be the same. So, <laughs> yeah, they have to be the same for both. Unfortunately, you can't because the references have to be, you, you have to be able to just uh, use the same references in place. So that's really good. So that's now done. Uh, minimum alignment is done. Mutable for local pools. Uh, that's not done, but we're going to do quickly. We're going to try deserializing. Uh, we're going to try and deserialize on um, um, we're going to try to deserialize struct moose and moose is going to have a foo u8. Okay. Um, yep, and this macro is broken. And that's kind of what we expected. Uh, deserialize has three type parameters. We haven't used these since we've made these changes. Uh, it has an indexer and it also takes found three, expected two. Um, Uh, uh, I think I can get rid of this. And then we'll pull that test into here just so we can test it in the crate. Get that nice check. The watch. Uh, no rules for this. Okay. Um, that's because this expects a lifetime. That's poolable. Yeah, so this expects a lifetime. So now we can make the lifetime optional. Viz, viz, attributes. Do I impl poolable here? No, I don't. Okay. 
Uh, lifetime. 201 still repeating at this point. Ooh, this is tough. Um, because this needs to be ID, I think. Yeah, since that has to be ID, I can't... This needs to expand to a lifetime or an ID. And I don't know how to do that. I could strictly say this is ID and then you have to use ID, <laughs> which is kind of gross. Um, but let's just see. So this lifetime deserialized lifetime ID. This will enforce that you use ID as your tag, which is mm, kind of cringe. Um, uh, field repeats one time, but lifetime repeats zero times. Here. Uh, can I do this? I don't think I can. This is something I can improve with time. I just want to get this working. Uh, deserialize ID expects a generic arguments, which is the indexer. Okay, nice. So we can deserialize a moose. And we can deserialize a uh, moose ref, which will have a numa ref id index u8. Now we need to make this work. Okay, nothing matches this. Um. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Uh, lifetime. Hmm. How do I do this? We allow one lifetime. And then after the lifetime, we allow multiple... Uh, generics? What's a generic? A generic with a constraint as well. How do we do this, chat? How do we match on this? Structure, uh, foop, it's not an expression, uh, and then we'll do, there can be only one, right? Yeah, you would only ever have ID and indexer, I think, is the way this would work. Honestly, I might just do this. With one generic parameter. Um, oh, index. If there's a lifetime, then we expect that there's an index. Oh, and I think this works. So it works with the empty, it works with this. It should work with a move ref slice. U128 to add some flavor. Doesn't have a size known at compile time. Uh, deserialize, not implemented for numeref T. Deserialize requires 
Uh, okay. Um, deserialize. Is that right? Size is not implemented for that. Deserialize is not, uh, it is implemented for that. Where self is sized. Yes. Deserialize ID index. Toop. Toop in this case should be a numerath. Um, a numeref ID index T. This. Uh, wait, deserialize here. For numeref, uh, where T is deserialized. <gasps> Monkas. Mmm. How do we do this? No, wait. This is correct. This is correct. It seems wrong, but it's actually correct. How the fuck could I deserialize a slice? Right? I can't deserialize a slice. Because I don't know how big it is. If I want to deserialize a slice, I have to use prefix slice, which then handles that for me. Yeah, I can't deserialize directly into this because how do I how do I know how long it is? Like I don't know how many elements it is. Um I should be able to derive poolable for this though. For all of these. So we'll get poolable working. I think it is the same uh, match. Um, Impl name lifetime. So this makes sure it's poolable. Da -da -da -da. That should match exactly the same. Uh, and then impl poolable, is that the problem here? Impl poolable for type. And this is ID tie. So implement poolable on base objects. We can get rid of this. Then implement poolable down here. Make sure, and then we implement it itself. And this is now on uh, the name. this specifically uh impl poolable for this uh lifetime is not in the scope here similar to deserialize uh we'll do the same thing here impl this id indexer Video game music, hell yeah. 
Ah, uh, pullable. Pullable. Expected. Struck to find here with one generic parameter. Yep. Uh, we're hurting it. Impel lifetime index. For lifetime index. Name lifetime index. This we don't have the lifetime for? We might. Lifetime. Um. Oh. Yeah, it's just this. It's the same thing. And then this is index indexer. Yep, up here. Uh, for name. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then what if we put something in here that's not pullable? Moose. Uh, mute U8. Uh, mute U8 cannot be shared between threads. And it can't be sent between threads. And poolable requires send and sync. Uh, okay, let's try one that it- let's try this. This we don't implement poolable on. Poolable not implemented for that. Yep. Uh, that rec yep. Perfect. I think this is good now. So we can implement poolable and deserialized for all of these. Well, poolable for this, we can't implement deserialized for this, but we can implement poolable and deserialize for a um uh uh pf slice, prefix slice. So we'll have a prefixed slice. And what do these take now? Let's make sure we can do one of these. Uh, it takes an ID, takes an indexer, it takes the type of the prefix, uh, which is the, the length, the elements, and then we can take the type. And this doesn't specify this, because this is not valid. Correct. Doesn't have a size known at compile time. So there we go. So now we can have a prefix slice, which we can also deserialize. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Uh, config test. Um, mod test. Uh, cargo test. Uh, use crate star. Can I do that now? Yes, I can. Uh, test fn test. Now, uh, let's payload is equal to. We'll do uh, uh, five, a six. Uh, the ref slice we can't do anything with, and then uh, uh, a three. A zero, that's a length. And then this many U8s. One, two, three. Let's pointer is equal to, uh, this is a mutable uh, slice to payload dot dots. And we should be able to do, um, we can create these. So we're going to shadow those types. That will allow us to then create these, the NUMA pool and the local pool, and then we can create the accessors here. And what we should be able to do now is, um, uh, we should be able to do a moose, deserialize, uh, into the local allocator using the pointer.
Um, Beautiful. Then we should be able to deserialize B, and B is going to be a moose ref slice. And then, uh, uh, C. This is a moose ref PF slice. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's a moose ref. There we go. Okay. Then we should be able to assert that A is equal to, um, A dot foo is equal to five. Assert that B dot foo, which is a reference. Uh, so LA dot get foo is equal to six. Right? The second thing. Then, um, this, we should be able to do, uh, uh, asserts that la.get c deref it. That gives me a ref. Uh, this.len should be equal to three. Uh, can't be derefed, correct. Uh, it's a deref of c foo. And uh, get slice. Um, yep, and that we have to deref on both of these. Well, that one we don't have to deref. Well, this we can just uh, assert that this is equal to um, one, two, three. Holy shit. It works, chat. Uh, uh, foo on this is not used. Okay. And then, uh, we should be able to do the same thing again. Uh, test dcir, uh, struct. This is going to be test dcir struct, uh, uh, ref struct and we're going to deserialize all of these as a numeref like this do 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 uh numeref moose ref uh, we'll have to give it the indexer as well. And the indexer, we're using a U32 and a U16 indexer. Okay, so now we're going to, we should be able to deserialize all of these, uh, moose ref, U16, U16, all these have to match. Unknown field, perfect. So we deserialize all of these things now into references themselves, um, and everything should be able to de be able to be deserialized into a reference themselves. Um, dun, 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 yep, a dot foo. There's no foo on a numeref because now we have to do an la dot get on a, and an la dot get on b. And an la dot gets on C. Holy shit! It works. It works. So we're able to deserialize them into references themselves, where we put those objects onto the pool. Um, that's really cool. And then we can assert that uh, size of val of a is equal to uh, size of u16, right? 
So we are making sure um, we are asserting that the size of a Numeref the is identical to the size of a U16 because we're using a U16 here for that pool size. And yeah, of course that passes. Beautiful. It, it just works. Literally just works. Um, so yeah, now we can deserialize things in those pools. Uh, thread safe type database. We can do those type databases. Mutable support for a local pool. We really have to do that. <sighs> kind of want to just do these tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do these tonight, man. So, <sighs> mutable support for local pools. Thread safe type database. Type database doesn't really matter yet. The mutable for local pools is important because we have to implement globalize. Um, so uh, we should be able to test. We're going to do a test uh, NUMA as local. So now we're going to do this. We're going to allocate a value. Let's val is equal to na.alloc5 u32 i'm going to assert that na.get val uh on wrap uh is equal to uh 5 u32 All right so we're going to make sure that we can deserialize that um Beautiful. Okay, and then uh, allocate something in the NUMA pool. Then what we're going to do is we're going to assert that we can make a local allocation out of that. So uh, local val is equal to la dot localize of val. So that's going to convert it into a local value that we can then do an la.get of, and that should also be 5u32. Um, local val. Yep. Woof. Yeah, and yeah, we can't, use, we can't use this reference on the local, which makes sense. They're not from the same pool, even though they technically can be associated here. So now we have a local value, and we can use the local accessor to obtain that value. Which means that we can then make a structure, um, mixed data, and this is a uh, uh, global, which will be a uh, numa ref id index indexer, um, id index of a u32, and then we'll have a local numa ref id index uh, u64. Okay, so what we're gonna make sure is that we can make this structure. Let temp is equal to mixed data global. So we can't put the value here, right? The value here is not okay. Well, uh, we technically could until this point. When we put a local where we'll do la.alloc100u64. Uh, so this will fail to build because these have differing lifetimes, right? So what we have to do is we have to localize this value. So we take the global value, we convert it into a local reference, and then I can do an la.get on temp global, and that should be a five, and I should do an la.get on temp local, and this should be 100u64. And of course it is. So that, that shows that we have a reference to something in the global NUMA pool, and we have something in the local pool, and we're able to access both. Um, right? And those are wildly different addresses. Um, yeah, this is fucking sweet, dude. This is so sick. <laughs> this is so sick. Oh, it's so fucking good! Tried using Scala the other day. Debugging was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, not surprised. I think uh, git status. Git commits am added some basic tests. Uh, ru 
rust test can you rust test for failure to compile i want to make sure that something fails to build can i do that you can do should panic but no, I don't think you can. That sounds weird, but yeah, I do want that. You can? How? Like I know like with, with like building another project or some shit, I can do that. I don't know how. Oh, oh, I got scammed. I got debated. <laughs> I got fucking debated. Uh, get status, get RM, uh, source type database. Okay. So we deleted that and now, uh, in doc comments. <gasps> oh, 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 yeah, I think I, I think I know what you're talking about. Interesting. Doc test has some, have an attribute. Comp wow. That compilation should fail. How does that work? How does compile fail work? Um, like what environment is that in? Like, I, I don't even know what environment that runs in. Tada. Yeah. Okay. Don't ask me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can probably find a way to make it work. But we do need to basically validate that we can't use indices with the wrong, uh, um, with the wrong pools, because that's the whole point of this fucking system. Um, isn't doc test? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I could, we can fuck around with that and make that work. Uh, what I want to do is I want to implement type databases now. Let's implement some, uh, Let's implement a super slow type database that works for both. Pub struct naive TDB. Um, type database, which is safe for uh, threaded uses, but is super slow, right? This can also be used for local type databases. Um... And this is just going to be a database, which is going to be a mutex of a B tree map of a U64 into a vector of Numa refs of ID. How do I, how am I going to use lifetimes in here? How do I use lifetimes for this? Maybe this is why I returned eye sizes before. <laughs> Cause taking in numerefs and stuff might be kind of hard. Uh we'll just we'll store the raw U sizes here. <laughs> uh or the indexes. Uh we don't know what an index is here either. Okay. It's gonna be very slow. Uh the type database. Watch. Okay, impl naive tdb. Um, pub fn, and then yes, we'll have to pull in. Use alloc collections. B tree map. Oh, we don't have a mutex. Use alloc vec vec. We don't have a mutex. We don't have a mutex. 
Uh, naive type database for a single thread uh, for a local pool. Impl, uh, type database for naive TDB, pub FN, uh, FN clear, self, uh, self.db.clear, FN insert. Uh, self dot entry. Uh, what was the thing? Oh, uh, it's poolable. So since it's poolable, we can say T pool ID or type pool ID, I think. Pool type. There we go. Uh, pool type dot or insert with vec new dot push and r and unfortunately we can't um can we do lifetimes here let's try it Oh, it doesn't know what the type is. Yeah, we don't know what the type is here. So we can't we can't type it at this stage. Okay. That's okay. We can do this. Um, that's the type we want to insert. And then we'll pass in a... Um, um, index into the database. Uh, with a given type ID. So this will be insert self... Uh, type... U64 index U size. And then this is unsafe FN types. Return indices uh, to types of a given type ID. Um, so this is unsafe now. Because uh, we're taking the type ID and we're yielding a slice of U sizes. So we're basically returning what was given to us. Um, and it's unsafe, uh, unsafe as the uh, U sizes stored must match the uh, type uh, passed into... Uh, inserts previously. Um, if the U sizes are changed or the type is not correctly associated with the uh, U sizes, this is um, undefined behavior. <laughs> Problem solved. Okay. And I'm thinking about making uh, all this stuff mute for these. -da -da -da. Perfect. Insert and types. So this is a valid uh, null implementation that does nothing. 
These are not mute. So these ones take mute for the locals. 136. Uh, and then these will, we'll start working on this later. Oops. What's going on here? Numeref and poolable, not pulled in. Cool. Uh, types. 132. Expected zero generic arguments in the Numa pool. Types. This will take that. Uh, that will return numerefs. Right now, we'll do nothing. Well, we'll call types um, unsafe this. What do you use? That's cargo watch. So cargo watch. Cargo install cargo hyphen watch. And then you just run cargo watch, and it will just watch for changes of the files. Super straightforward. I like it quite a bit. Uh, so here we're going to look up for types. And we pass in... T pool type. So we request the types for a given pool type. Um, that gets us a slice of uh, this is uh, raw indices. Okay, so get the raw slice of u size. I think we need to make uh, this take index, actually. Same shit, not mute. Okay, so that's an indexer, indexer. So now it knows the correct index type. Um. We know that index is repr transparent from a numeref, so we can cast that. Such a great soundtrack, dude. Uh, type database. Oof. Oof. That hurt. That hurt. Thought that was going to fit. Didn't. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Oof! Oof again! <sighs> Getting blasted. Getting absolutely wrecked. Mm -hmm. 
Could have actually done a find and replace here. I didn't know if I would use type database in a non uh, definition like this, though. And we just have. Parameters. Index are on those. Dicks. Dicks. Prefix slice. Nice. I'm hoping that this will build. Uh, null TDB. Oh, yeah, this, uh, it doesn't need it for this one. <sighs> then these are indexes now. Nice. Your complete disregard for doing a single change and then uh, using n and dot makes me sad. I'm not using dot. I'm not using dot, damn it. Uh, okay, this is bitching because we don't return it. So get the raw slice of index. Uh, cast it into a uh, numa ref. Unsafe. Oh, well, we might as well just do it here then. Let raw is equal to this. Now that we have those, we can do a uh, core slice from raw parts. Raw dot as pointer as const this. Uh, raw dot len. And then I'm just going to be strict here and say I'm expecting this to be a slice of index. Raw as pointer. I nail it? No, semi. Did I nail it? Oh my god, I'm so smart. Okay, so that will convert them. They're the same size, so we know that this is okay. Um, then we have type db.insert. And this is going to be a t pool type. And then ret dot index and that's the actual index same thing here uh t nope that's not t um so this is t pool type this is uh slice t ret dot index Right? Uh, here we're initializing a slice, so it definitely is a reference, and that is a slice of T's. So that's the pool type that we're interested in here. We know that that's poolable. Um, yeah, that's what we want. And then ret index, and then this ret index, and then this is types, pool type. So then this is the same shit. So we have type db types for the t pool type. t could be unsized. Uh, then we cast it here. And then 259. And then this. Uh, 
Uh, unused. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Uh, can't borrow is mutable. Oh yeah, because we changed that. We're gonna try and switch all of this. We're gonna try to switch all this stuff to uh, for the local pool where it takes self. So uh, we're gonna make. We're gonna try to make all these take mute. Well, that doesn't need to be mute in that case. Um, clear is mute. Insert is mute. Types is not. Okay, so that means this. That doesn't need mute. That's fine. This needs mute. This needs mute. This doesn't need mute. This needs mute. Uh, well, let's see. We could actually just do these correctly now. That doesn't need mute. This needs mute because we... It doesn't. Well, no, well, it's initializing a field, so it should be mute. Even though we do inter interior mutability. Um, All right, we got a little bot, dude. Um, so what I can do is I can look at changing this to u sizes and i can change this to not mutate via a shared reference okay everything's gonna break now welcome to the party everything's broken again accessor that takes mute self local accessor this is self that's fine this is mute self. This needs to be mute self because uh, we're going to get the old thing and then in use dot set. This is just in use is equal to end. Okay, so that needs to be mutable because we're changing that. Then uh, uh, types. Fifty-six. This is just a zero. Uh, we don't need cell or unsafe cell, do we? Okay. Two or three unsafe cell. Uh, now we're gonna bypass this, and that will just get us the node data, and we skip the unsafe cell. And this will just be mute. Uh, is there as mute pointer for maybe uninit? And yeah, I think this needs to be a mute reference, but we're gonna get to that. Um, mute, alloc, that requires mute. Init, this requires mute. Alloc, this requires mute. Get unchecked, this does not require mute. Um, maybe uninit, we get this data. We don't need to go through the unsafe cell here. Okay. So that was get unchecked. Get, doesn't need mute. Uninit slice, create storage, mute. Init slice, mute. Alex slice, mute. Get unchecked slice, that should be fine. Get slice, that should be fine. Confidently describe what we're doing. Right now, we are converting from using interior mutability into using non-interior mutability. Uh, this will slightly improve the uh, quality of the code gen, theoretically, um, and it's a little bit more correct to have these mutable references. Uh, initially, I think... I didn't pass self into closures. So if we need to pass mute into something into a closure, we'll just pass along that mutable reference with it. And hopefully we don't absolutely get fucked. Oh, oh, got a British accent as well. So right now we're going through here, uh, unsafe cell. Uh, so 
It's pretty simple. We're just going to remove all these things, right? All these things that don't need to be mutable, we're changing. Super simple, right? We're skipping a level. You got a fucking scan, mate. Okay, so then we're going to go through here. That doesn't need to be set. This is now just our zero, right? That's a big improvement. 204. Diff is mutability. Uh, okay, that's pretty good. Now, now we've got, in the, got some of the problems here, but this is exactly what I... Kind of a, a, ex, a, exactly what I expect, right? Nothing here is amiss. Exactly what I expected. No problems whatsoever. So going through here, anything here, uh, maybe on an it. Uh, that's okay. This is okay. Wait, do we only meet in that one in that one location? Cause that's constant. That's mutable, but that needs to be mutable, which is great. This is constant, right? Now I've become fond of the stream, yeah? Yeah, brav. As everyone else leaves, some people stay. <laughs> Seems to be how it goes. Right? Okay. 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 Deserialize. Uh, accessor now needs to be mute. And now it needs to be mute. Absolutely stunning performance, 10 out of 10. I'm glad my accent is just masterpieceful. Mute. Okay, are we getting there? That looked like that was more stuff. That's prefix slice. Okay, that's easy because this is a macro. Um, this is just mute. Oh, now it's not that many things. Accessor. Now, this is a problem for slices at 76 because we're past the accessor in Alex Slice. Uh, so these fun motes, these, we're now going to pass mute self. Same with this. We're going to pass mute self. And now it should work. Fuck. Okay, 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 okay. Please, 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 please. Alec. Accessor. This is on numerefs of T. We can just do this. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, no, I can do this. Uh, I think this is more correct. And then X. Accessor.alloc X. Uh, okay. Yes! Let's go! Fucking easy! Big improvement. Because now we're not using interior mutability in here. Woo! Alright, so now that's a little bit more direct. That theoretically could lead to better code gen. Purpose still is good. I have no idea. I'm kind of scared to check. Uh, does this still do a benchmark? Allocation failure zero sixteen. Uh, U32s. These are eights. And we should be able to do 32 and a 16. Yep. No perfect. Uh, that seems a little unstable, but I think that's just a fluke. 
Yeah, I think I think my system's just noisy right now. I don't really know why. But I think my system is just noisy. I don't know. It like we're reliably hitting the 82 number. It's still there's no way we would even be within one one hundredth of these. Um if uh it was not emitting that perfect code. That's more perf it's the same. It's the same. Like that it can't it it can't be optimized more than what it was, which is a fucking unrolled loop of vector instructions. Like it can't it can't optimize beyond that. Right? Like yeah, it's just it's just the same thing. <laughs> you just can't there's no room to improve. <laughs> um but yeah. So now that's more correct. I think initially just the way that I had the code structured, I couldn't pass through that mute, but now I can pass through the mute into things that need it. So basically you pass along ownership of the mutable reference as you uh as you call functions and invoke closures. So I think that was like an early hack that I don't need anymore. Um, well, clearly I don't need anymore because now, now I don't have interior mutability on this and I don't use cells at all, which theoretically could optimize a bit, a bit better. Uh, it really shouldn't make any difference, um, but it's, it's less for the compiler to reason about. It's probably less IL that gets emit to LLVM. So even though LLVM can remove a lot of that stuff pretty easily, um, but yeah. This I just still cost your first point trial. Yes, it's very expensive. Um, how did the source code recovery go? It failed. <laughs> it failed. No surprise. It failed. Okay, so now uh, thread safe type database. We can't really do that, unfortunately. Um. Yep, and then those are mute. Oh, now we can implement this. So I'm going to be okay with a non-thread safe type database. Um, if we just do this, add mutable support for local pools. We'll do that in a minute. Now that's actually going to be easier than ever, which is dank as fuck. Two to three thousand US dollars. Yeah, yeah. Wait until you add hex rays to that. Two to three K is cheap for Ida. <laughs> I definitely paid more than that. Uh... Impl naive type database um, with an index indexer index um, uh, type database index for this. Okay, near the functions self.db.clear that clears the database who would have thunk uh self.db.entry type uh dot or insert with uh vec new dot push uh index done you can see how naively you can do this pretty easily uh then we have types uh, this is just going to do a uh, self.db.get ref type uh, dot or uh, unwrap or slice. Uh, and then derive to fault. Uh, not imp default not implemented for index. Fuck off. <sighs> Fuck off. Uh, impl index <laughs> indexer default for type database or naive TDB index 
Uh, FN defaults. Yields itself. Uh, uh, self DB B tree map new. Wow, now it works. Uh, expected a vec. Um, yeah. So I think what we'll do is map X as slice. I don't want to say nailed it, but uh, fucking nailed it. Uh, pub use parameters naive TDB. Fucking nailed it, mate. Uh, test type DB. Uh, la dot alec, uh, five u sixty four. Unwrap. La dot alec nine u sixty four. Unwrap. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh, prince. Uh, four val in la dot get uh types u sixty four. <laughs> uh, la dot get val. Cargo test, no capture. That's okay. Uh, X turn create standard. Well, we don't need it. We don't need that. Here's what we'll do. Uh, we're going to, uh, for each of these, uh, let temp is equal to this, uh, dot iter, dot into iter. I can't do into iter here. Iter. Uh, temp dot next dot unwrap, uh, la dot get this. Assert that this is equal to five. And then this is equal to nine. Um, technically, the ordering is not guaranteed. Because uh, that's up to the implementation. But this is fine. Um, 336. Dear F. DRF. T should be into iter. Okay, nice. Uh, unwrap on none. Yeah, that's not going to work because this needs to be a naive TDB. And this needs to take an indexer. And we're using a U16 indexer in this case. And this is where everything falls apart. And we realize either we made a very small, subtle mistake, or catastrophically, this whole program fundamentally will not work. Uh, clear and test. Uh, no default exists for this. Uh, 2d4. We can't make a default with a naive TDB. Okay, why? Oh, yeah, no, we can't, yeah. Uh, a null TDB, I call it? Yeah. Passed. And then we could put in like a U, uh, U32 here, like a 1U32, right? And then I should be able to do uh, types U32, iter, gets, and into iter you said works. If I do into iter, then I don't need that DRF. 
This should be a one U32. Oh, there is into iter, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> really, what I want is like copied. Well, that fucking works. Uh. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that's sick. Holy shit. This is so good, dude. Um. That also means up here, I should be able to assert... That la dot uh, types uh, mooses. Actually, there's no mooses on this one. Down here, I should be able to get a moose. Uh, we'll just DRF zero. Assert that this la dot get this is equal to moose. Um, and a moose, this is a moose foo five. Uh, yeah, let's just add support for that. And then this is a DREF. Um, derive, uh, partial EQ EQ. Yep. So even that works. So when we deserialize things, they just automatically show up in that. And I should be able to also uh, do this for types. Um, let's try types of U8, which I think is what we have here. Yep, that's a U8. So we want to get a U8 here. Assert types U8, a slice of U8s. This should be equal to uh, one, two, three. Get slice. Uh... I don't want to DRF. That works. So even though that was deserialized as part of a structure, when I request types that match a U8, that will show up. Um, then uh, let's add another thing. Let's do bar. And bar is going to be a numeref ID index U8. So now we're going to have U8s. A slice of numeref U8s. Um, and this is where we get really scared because lifetimes maybe won't work. 246. Dun, 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 Bana, bana, bana. Oh. Index might not last long enough. Might not live long enough. Uh, that should be clone copy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, did I do something stupid? Is this, this is probably a failing of my macro. I don't think this is a failing of my entire my entire code base. Uh, but who knows? I'm just waiting for it to all fall apart and unravel. Um. <laughs>
What? Cargo expand? Yeah, I'll get to that in a second if I have to. What is cargo expand? Cargo install, cargo expand? I've never used this before. Let's see what this shit is. Oh my god, this is hot as fuck. Uh, it'd be nice if it could pipe to less, though. That's a shame. This is Final Fantasy VI soundtrack. Uh... How do I get this to less? We'll just do this. Uh, syntax rust? How the fuck do you do this? Set syntax rust? There it is. Uh, this is failing where? Uh, cargo tests. Um... I don't know what instance uh, this is expanding to. Well, we know it is related to uh, Moose Ref PF Slice. Okay, that's not in here. Oh, because this needs to be Cargo Span Test? Um. Tests. Test. Uh, this one should be good enough. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Uh huh. So does this not work? You're getting scammed. You're getting scammed. Lib? No. No. No, we're getting scammed. Oh, we'll just figure it out. Cargo test. Um. Parameter type index may not live long enough. And that's because we have a numeref here. Um, indexer should be static, right? Like, it, I don't even know how an indexer would have. Oh, it's because. This. 
Why do I have that? I don't think I need that. I also don't know if I need that copy. Poolable and deserialize, poolable and deserialize. Let's see what happens. Shit, I thought that was going to be it. Um... Index does not live long enough. Poolable and deserialize ID. So then deserialize must be requiring ID. Self is sized. RG uh, colon dot star ID. Uh, cargo install rip grip. So I wonder if for some reason uh, somewhere did I put a uh, an ID constraint? Poolable. T is poolable sized and all references in it are ID. If I get rid of that, do I break everything? I think that breaks everything. Because I need to make sure that every lifetime inside of there is ID. Right? Well, that's actually only for numeref. What if I do ID here? What happens? Do I, like, break all of my code? Uh, oh. I can't do that. I think I do want ID here. I think I do want to say that uh, numerefs, things in the pool, no, I don't need it. I don't know. We'll run into some soundness issues. It'll be fine. Uh, T is poolable and sized. I wouldn't be able to access the fields if they're a different lifetime. Um, and it's an unsafe impl. Which means that the only safe way to implement it is with derive. And derive, I explicitly expect everything to be ID. Okay. Um, I would be looking for explicitly like something with a white space. What? Are you telling me there's genuinely no occurrences of that? Or is my regex wrong? There are no occurrences of that. Um, ninety two. Oh, do I have to say it here? I guess I do. Yes. There might not be a lifetime. Uh...
Okay, you can't do that. Um, so I actually need it on there, otherwise it doesn't build. That's good to know. Uh, 237. Index may not live long enough. But it's copy, dude. I don't know if adding clone helps it at all. I mean, I could say that it must also be static. Ah, there we go. Um, that makes sense. So, indexer, um, it theoretically, even though it's clone and copy, it's not, it could be a shared reference. So, yeah, I have to say that it's static. That makes sense. That might even help optimizations a bit. Uh, then these are failing Y. Uh, 295. Uh, unwrap is failing to deserialize. That's great because it is. Uh, 30123. So now we're deserializing another field here. Now the other one will fail to deserialize, which is great. But yeah, you're right, Desu. I was trying to see if there's something else that was fucky. Um, okay. All those tests pass. So now what we can do is we can, um, down here, we can LA get slice of numeref of index, which is U16, U8. Um, just want to do this. Nice, that doesn't fail, so that's good. Um, so what's interesting is that means that we should be able to write this code. Uh, we'll do, uh, yeah, U8s. Um, check to see that we deserialized, um, four U8s. There's a U8 there, and then there's three U8s in here. One from, uh, moose.foo, and three more from, uh, this.bar. I think I called it bar. Yes. Uh, bars, a uh, slice, right? And these should be in order, uh, six, I think, followed by a one, two, three. And then we can assert that this is, uh, none. And I'm going to do that up here where I do the temps. Pass. Yeah. So there, we deserialize a bunch of shit. We deserialize a moose. We deserialize a moose ref PF slice. And that has generated, we got one U8 that was deserialized, deserialized when we did the moose ref. There are three that we deserialized when we did this. And all of them match. Like, we, yeah. Every time we deserialize an object, it gets thrown in that pool. It's really fucking cool. It's really cool. Uh, okay. 273 bars unused. Sure. Uh, Clippy. Clippy's happy, git commit am, added generic a local um, type database using b tree map and vec. So Clippy's happy, uh, and then watch is happy. This code should still build and run and still be fast. 
right? They should still be completely fast. Yep. And let's see how slow that type database is. It's probably pretty slow. Um, uh, naive TDB. And then this takes an index, U16. So this is trying it in our benchmark. This is now putting all of those in a database. And yeah, the perf's gonna be shot now, but that's okay. Um, it's not a big deal because we're registering all those types. So let's see how fast this runs when we're registering types. We're still getting 300 million allocations a second. Which is still really fucking good. For that naive, shitty allocator, or the, the type database, where it literally it's just like every time it encounters a new type, it just adds it to the vector. And then we clear it, and we get the types here. You're a great uh, programmer. I wish it was great as you. It's just practice, man. I mean, it's a lot of practice. I don't want to say that everyone can just trivially get to my level. Um, because I've spent a lot of time doing this stuff, but that's really all I've done. I've just spent a lot of time doing this stuff. Uh, okay. Wow, so we're still getting 300 million allocations a second with this. That's fucking cool, dude. Let's see what the code gen's like. It's going to be like the standard stuff. It's going to branch. It's going to compare to see if it needs to realloc. It's going to check the length. Um, there's only so much we can do here. Yeah, it's pretty complex code at this point. Yeah, a bunch of alloc, uh, like error handling stuff for allocations. Oh, it does some stuff in bulk. That's interesting. So it still does some operations in bulk. Um, oh, these are the type IDs. Yeah, here's type IDs. This is fucking sweet, dude. So theoretically, this will get slower. So we're getting 300 mil. Let's make sure that's consistent. Um, there's a little bit of variance here, unfortunately. Yeah, about 300 mil seems to be where it's falling in. If we go now to U sizes, this should now be slower. And the reason this is slower is because it increases the size of references, which increases the size of these vectors. Because these indexes are the indexes that we supply up in, uh, up in here. So now that type database is larger. Um, uh, oh yeah, use size for this. Sweet, and I'm glad that that fails at compile time. Okay, it's the same perf. Uh, yeah. All right. In this case, it just doesn't really matter. It would probably matter if we get closer to... Uh, if we push over L1. So these are 8 bytes each. My L1 is 48 uh, kilobytes. So I can fit 6,144 byte allocations. Um, 6144. This will fit inside. So if I double this, this will fit. Okay, let's see what happens. I don't know. The, the overhead of like the vector stuff might just make this not matter. So 30. And then if we go to U16s. I think this just won't really matter. Theoretically, it's a denser database, right? That vector literally holds these indices. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. There's so much other overhead and shit going on that it, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's the null TDB, so we're back to not having a uh, uh, type database, and this should be back to the really fast, yeah, 170 billion allocations a second. Um, so that's really, really, really good. Um, okay, so that optimizes really well. And really, the optimization depends on the quality of this null TDB. Um, or the type database. So if you say no type databases, you don't, 
uh, compress the indexes. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is fucking sick, dude. Uh, so what else do I want to do? I want to do mutable support for local pools. And I think I might do that tomorrow. So we need to implement globalize. And basically what globalize will do is it will be another macro, another procedural macro we'll have to make. Where basically for every field, if that field is a numeref, it will then push it to the global pool. So basically, I want to make it so that I can say like, moose ref pf slice, I can deserialize that into the local pool, and then I can push this into the numa pool. And to push this into the numa pool, I have to, um, to push this into the numa pool, I have to, uh, I have to recursively, for every reference, push those references into that NUMA pool, right? Because I can't have local references on the NUMA pool. If I have a local reference on the NUMA pool, then it's undefined behavior. So I need to make sure that when I push objects to the NUMA pool, they must only contain references that match the lifetime of the NUMA pool itself, or more specifically, they just have that top bit clear. If the top bit is set on any reference that I push, into the numa pool then it's this whole thing's broken but i'm pretty sure i can do that with uh with a macro where it would recursively descend through the structure and for all the references that are in that structure it will push them uh to the pool and then it will reconstruct new objects with those new references such that i can pull those down um That'll probably take, like, eight hours to write. That's going to be very, very, very difficult code. Um, that's what I kind of hacked up offline, where I just unsafed and hand-waved a lot of the safety. But I want to do it safely, and I'm really happy with this. I'm going to show you something very cursed and rust-safe tomorrow. What could that possibly be? Doesn't sound very healthy, Desu. Okay. Um, so yeah. But I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, yeah, because I'm kind of tired. Let's see who is streaming right now. Let's see who we can raid. Uh, literally, no one I'm following is streaming right now. Fuck. Um... Okay. Live. All right, we're gonna send you off to Pirate Software.